Well, Dragon Folk, it looks like there was an awesome announcement for what's happening at Gen Con for Flesh and Blood, and it's actually information on the new First Strike heroes on top of a new armory deck. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what heroes are on the docket and how these new products will perform later on. Welcome on in Dragon Folk. It is such a pleasure to have you all here. Today, we're going to go over some beginner focused product. Now, as a very, very big advocate of well designed beginner focused product, I wanted to go over the announcements for these decks. And granted, it is an early understanding of what these decks do, simply because we don't know what the deck lists look like or anything of the sort. But I wanted to go ahead and give you an idea of what these are supposed to accomplish, how I believe they are going to accomplish them, and my first ideas on the deck itself. So Fab Gen Con is going to come out with this awesome thing. First and foremost, a new hero was also announced during this announcement, so pretty cool. Not sure if we're going to see this hero in Rosetta, the next set for Flesh and Blood, but uh, we will see Earth cards, and this is an Earth Guardian. So let's go over some of this stuff here. This is Terra. Terra is a Earth Guardian that says at the beginning of each end phase, if there is an Earth card in your pitch zone, you may pay a resource. And if you do, create a Might token. Now, Terra is pretty straightforward as far as Guardian stats go. The cool thing about them is that they're playing more defensive, while Aurora, who is the other hero that we had seen here, this, uh, this hero was already announced for Rosetta, but this is a alternate art specifically for the first strike decks for her. Um, and she is more of an offensive deck, right? She likes to go wide, be very aggressive with her stuff. And they've made that known in all of these little blurbs here, right? Take up the mantle of an elemental hero, harnessing your connection to the forces of nature in order to unlock powerful abilities. Stand firm with Terra, a guardian whose unbreakable earth bond. Now earth bond is in caps. So I'm assuming that Earthbond is a new uh, mechanic that we are going to see specifically with Terra. They keep him alive while he cultivates a late game smackdown and then feel the lightning flow with Aurora, a runeblade who fries her opponents to a crisp with a barrage of electrifying attacks. Now, I could be I could be wrong on the card mechanics, actually. Lightning flow could be a specialization name. And Earthbond could be a specialization name. We don't know. Again, the only thing we know about are the heroes and the tokens they make. Aurora makes Embodiment of Lightning, which gives your next attack action card go again. And then Might is, as we've seen in uh, Heavy Hitters, Might is also for just kind of getting a whole bunch of damage saved up. So when it's your turn, you have extra damage added on to stuff. So I'm sure cards like Concuss and other fun things are going to be there, but these decks are set up to be very simple, right? And I'd imagine that the goal is to simplify these as first strike decks because they are meant to be for new players. What I have questions about is why they would make Aurora as a first strike deck and then also as a blitz deck, because I do believe that even still to this day, as they continue making blitz decks, that they are expecting people to utilize those blitz decks as a entry point into the game, right? When you buy that four pack, uh, you know, super big blitz deck deal here that you see down at the bottom, this guy, when you see this, you get four blitz decks, two packs and a whole big long box and a play mat for like $70. And this comes with all four of the decks, all four of the heroes. You can play around with each one of them, play with your friends. It's super awesome. But is this Aurora deck going to be different than this Aurora deck? Because if they contain the same cards, then I kind of it's kind of a little bit of a miss on my end. But I'm still curious to see what's going to happen here, how they're set up is pretty straightforward. You're going to have six decks of three, uh, three of each hero. So you're only going to have uh, Terra and Aurora as these heroes. 
and then each pre-constructed deck contains 40 cards plus a hero weapon equipment and token cards so it's going to be set up almost exactly like a blitz deck that you would or already get its price point is even the same as those blitz decks that are released but it looks like what they're doing is they are moving their beginner focused product to be from single you know single decks of blitz decks and instead if you want the blitz decks for the actual set you have to buy the long box whereas if you want the blitz decks to learn how to play the game those will come individually at stores as these first strike decks now the first strike decks are actually available for play and legal in tournaments as of august 1st which is when they will be uh given out at gen con gen con is a convention in indiana it's a big games convention and they are going to be giving out on top of the blaze promo they're going to be giving out this awesome uh you know early access to the blitz uh you know what do you call them uh the the first strike decks and while i think that's great i also feel like it's just showing off more of the cards from rosetta before they're actually supposed to be I feel like you kind of get an idea for what the deck is supposed to do before you even hear about anything from Rosetta because Rosetta is actually supposed to be released um, and we're supposed to get like a spoiler season sometime around the end of August. But these guys are all going to be available to you at the beginning of August. And then not to mention the fact that if you do not go to Gen Con uh, outside of the release date for the Philippines specifically because they'll be at the Battle Harden for Manila, the release date will be August 23rd. Now, August 23rd, that's uh, pretty close to the release of Rosetta, so makes sense as to why that would be the case there. I feel like there's kind of a bit of a miss, especially since Aurora is already in here. What is the purpose of buying the Aurora deck for the, you know, the Blitz deck collection other than getting the extended art cards and the rainbow foil hero, I'd imagine. But that's kind of it here. These decks are also supposed to be played against one another, so it's defensive against offensive. And I, I, I like the fact that they're meant to play against one another, but I feel like this is going to lose that kind of uniqueness as the game continues on, because I'm sure these first strike decks are not going to be good to play against the next set of first strike decks, unless they are. If they are, that's super great, and it'll be a, uh, you know, essentially a format specific to learning the game. But if you have to play, you know, if somebody's interested in Aurora and they make a different first strike deck down the line that's of a different hero that doesn't come with any like, you know, arcane barrier or anything of the sort to learn that, then you're going to have just the same situation that you have with your, with your Blitz decks in which you can't play them into any hero. They have to just be from that specific set. Uh, but it is what it is, right? Well, you know, I'm very curious to see how it's going to work out. And more beginner friendly product is always very good for me, but uh, I just kind of don't know whether or not this is just to call it a, another set of Blitz decks or if this is truly going to have a more streamlined version of, uh, you know, how these heroes are supposed to play and don't get into any of the like advanced nitty gritty kind of stuff. But who knows? But on top of that, though, what we have actually is also announcement for Azalea in the Armory deck. Now, we know Bolton is coming out in July with his Armory deck, and we only know a couple of cards from that. We don't know the list yet. But as of right now, we now know that Azalea is also going to be getting an Armory deck. And that's really good because Azalea is a favorite of a lot of people, and she definitely is doing pretty well into the format as of these days. But on top of this, she's also getting new cards. Every Armory deck has new, unique cards in it, and Azalea is no different. So taking a look at her product, obviously there are two cards here that were released so that we can we can see them. They were spoiled, and it's Line It Up and Target Totalizer. So take a quick look into this. Line It Up is actually going to be a new Majestic uh, Ranger action. Pitches for three. You can play it for one resource, blocks for three. And then your next arrow attack this turn gets plus three, and then you may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up. And if you do, you put an aim counter on it. So it looks like they're going to try and make this uh, this armory deck very aim counter specific, which is fine because I think that the aim counters are not utilized very well in the you know in the play style these days. But 
we want to see different ways to play Azalea, and I feel like targeting strictly the aim counter aspect is going to be a great way to put her into the format, or at least be able to pick her up and get an idea about how she should be played. And the next card, of course, Target Totalizer, a new headpiece. Not sure if this is going to end up actually being replacing uh, Skull, skull Wrap or Cross Wrap, Skull Bone Cross Wrap. Nobody's going to be replacing this with that unless they are strictly an aim build. But again, this is much like Savage Sash, where you pretty much just get to use its ability once and then you don't have to use it ever again because it'll be destroyed. But it is a pretty good ability. You know, destroy this whenever an arrow with a game counter hits this turn, you draw a card. That's pretty good, but I don't know how wide Azalea really gets. Probably like three arrows wide, if that. So you're able to keep a few cards in hand and maybe even keep an arsenal. But I'm not sure that it's going to help with the dominate plan that she has. Although, with a bunch of aim counter cards entering the fray, we do have access to a bunch of aim counter cards that aren't really utilized. I mean, Infecting Shot is always used in Withering Shot. Those all just get additional power when they have aim counters on them. But when you take a look at cards like Deadeye, which puts an aim counter, if in, if the next arrow has an aim counter on it, it'll have you just look at their hand and discard a card if it, that arrow hits. Immobilizing Shot says if it's got an aim counter, it says when this hits a hero, you can't play more than one attack action and one non-attack action card during their next action phase. So there are plenty of ways to give aim counters, but on top of Azalea getting these, Riptide also is going to care about aim counters because this says this is Riptide specialization for Murky Water. If it's got an aim counter, it gets plus one and dominate. So the best thing is, is that I feel like this is going to be a deck that's going to be able to be kind of like hot swapped between Riptide and Azalea. You just need to worry a lot more about getting traps into Riptide, which isn't a terrible you know, idea for that. You could also see Sandscour Great Bow getting a reprint, but I doubt it. I believe you're going to see uh, you're going to see Death Dealer. I believe Death Dealer is the way to go. So this, of course, is going to be another wonderful deck. I believe the MSRP is still going to be yeah right around forty dollars. So hopefully people are able to pick this up pretty quickly. And this is going to be the third armory deck that we're going to see. And since it's the third armory deck, that means now people have a lot more of an option or if they're trying to get into the game for new decks to pick up. Now, I've already made a video talking about the KO armory deck. And once the Bolton armory deck is released in its entirety, I'm probably going to go ahead and talk about that as well. I do want to make sure that the decks are actually pretty well done. I mean, I had, a lot, I had some things to say about KO, but I think KO even still is a really, really great product coming out. So I hope Bolton's able to do the same. And I believe Azalea is going to do the same as well, regardless of whether or not it doesn't have the most powerful cards in the deck. It is going to be a beginner product that people are going to get into. Whereas with the wonderful new First Strike decks, I'm still kind of on the fence about whether or not these are going to do as well for LSS as everybody thinks they are, because the Blitz decks have always been kind of the way to get into the game. And you use the same concept where you take a set and that set's blitz decks are good to go against one another. So you have six heroes from outsiders and all six of those heroes are good to go against one each other, you know, each other in that uh, kind of style of a blitz pre-constructed format. Whereas with this, they either have to make sure that they are just putting cards in there strictly for learning purposes and not so much for winning because... The Blitz decks are probably not going to be getting any kind of Majestics or anything of that sort. So there's no reason for these decks to be any different, I guess. Uh, I'm curious to see what the lists look like. I'm curious to see what cards are involved, uh, whether or not we are going to see some very special uh, first strike stuff, maybe like uh, special promos that LGSs are going to give out for first strike nights if you're going to do like a first strike event at your LGS. I think that'd be pretty cool. But regardless, we got to see a new hero in Terra. So that's pretty cool to see. I'm curious if Terra is going to actually make an appearance as a hero to play in uh, Rosetta. But regardless, even if he isn't, there is currently only a young version of Terra. And that means that they are only available in young formats like Blitz and Commoner and Clash and so on and so forth. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We went ahead and talked over all of these wonderful new goodies for Flesh and Blood. And if you guys are going to Gen Con, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about what you guys got planned. I certainly wish I could go this year, but unfortunately, we're going to have to probably just save up and wait till next year. But thanks so much for watching. Make sure you go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and I'll see all of your beautiful faces in our next Flesh and Blood video. Take care. Nerd out.